Greetings, Glitter Goddesses. Happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday, December 3rd when I'm recording this. Um, you can see I have a long sleeve. You don't usually see clothes. I'm just floating hands and forearms normally, but it's 51 degrees Fahrenheit right now in Florida, which depending on where you live may not sound that dramatic, but it's pretty dramatic. If you live in Florida where it's normally 75. Uh, yes, you may ask a question about a purchase in the shop. Yes. Um, so I'm just going to do another uh, video in the series for the 12 days of Christmas box. Um, Kitty is up here crying because she wants me to do something about the fact that it's so cold outside and I refuse to do something about the fact that it's so cold outside. So now she's mad. Um, so, you know, and no amount of explaining about the realities of like physics and who can control the weather seems to make a dent. So, um, so greetings to, um, everyone who joined me for this impromptu show. Barbara Jean, hello. How are you? Alicia Bell, welcome to you from North Carolina. Candy is here. She's already decorated her box and posted it on um, the Facebook group. So if you want to see a box already decorated, she's got you covered. Um, and then Bubs Bubs is here from Northern Italy, where it's also cold, colder than it is here, like 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Flo, welcome. How are you? And Lori got an alert before I came on and it's 39 degrees where she is in Indiana, 55 in Arizona where Barbara Jean is, which is another state that's not really that chilly normally this time of year. Catherine, welcome. How are you? Um, but yeah, you um, and and then um, Bubs Bubs asks, if you have a question about a purchase in shop, you can always email info at catherinescraps.com. You can also ask me here. And if it's something I can answer off the top of my head, I'll answer it. Um, but if it's about a specific order, you can email sales at catherinescraps.com. So generic sort of general questions, info, uh, specific order sales, and then, um, you know, or you can just ask me here. All right. So let's get going. First thing I'm going to do is do some measuring. Let's see how much measuring I can get done before Kitty attacks. I'm just going to get, I'm going to get a pencil and I'm going to, all right, I'm going to start writing some measurements down. All right. So we have, Okay, so this piece is four, I'm guessing it's four by nine and a half, which is the size of the box. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so I'm just going to write down the measurements of all these outside pieces so I can just measure once. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to leave the bottom alone. There's no reason to decorate this. This piece I know is six and a half by seven. I remember that. Um, the back, I think, is... Seven by nine and a half. Yep. And the side is six and a half by seven. All right. So, oh my gosh, autofocus is on. What is, what the heck? How did this happen? Oh, oh I didn't turn autofocus off. All right, now it's off. done. Cool. All right. 
so I'm going to start with this front panel and I'm not going to cut my piece four inches by nine and a half. I'm going to cut a 12 inch strip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around to the sides so that it covers this little gap on the corner. And right where it covers the corner, I think I'm going to reinforce it with some Tyvek. This is above and beyond. You could just cut it to be this exact, you know, whatever this and it'll look fine. This is just me being, you know, over the top, but my paper is kind of thin. So that's why I want to reinforce it on the corner with Tyvek because I'm using a very, very thin paper. So I just need to pick a paper. And I might go with like that, something plaid. Or I might try to find two papers that'll look really cute together. So for instance, if I use the poinsettia for the front and the back, and I use the musical note for the sides, or if I use the musical note for the front and the back, and I use the poinsettia for the side, you know, these two kind of go together. Not that not the other sheets in the collection don't go together. I'm just kind of pulling out pieces that I think might be really cute together. All right. So I'm thinking that these two could look really good. This on the front and the back and this on the sides. But if I do these two, it would look a little more country, but I don't like, actually that makes the red so intense. Whereas I don't, this seems a little calmer. That's a little calmer. So maybe, and then let's see, do I like this with the, see, this is a nice combination. All right, I'm gonna do these two. So what that means is right off the bat, I've gotta cut another, another sheet of this. So I will need two of, the, of this pattern. But you only need one of the one that goes on the front and the back. You need two for the ones that go on the sides because the ones that go on the sides, um, the sides are six and a half. So you can't get two sheets. You can't get two pieces out of one sheet. So I got to find the other musical note paper. Now I did just in case something like this happened, I did print two of every sheet in this collection. So I do have another one and this is just to show you how I print. I use the 13 by 19 paper because 13 by 19 paper is easier to find and cheaper usually than 12 by 12. And then um, because it's a standard printing size called super B or super tabloid. And um, I put the 12 by 12 paper at the top and then I put cards at the bottom. And now I always have extra. Alrighty. So let's start with the front and the back. So I'm going to cut 
a four inch strip off of this. for the front. And again, I'm going to leave it 12 inches. So it's going to be four by 12. And then I'm going to put this on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around the sides. Okay. But I want to reinforce where it goes around just a little bit with like just a half inch, little half inch piece of Tyvek. So we're going to have to do some mathing and stuff. Let me get a piece of Tyvek. Okay. I am decorating the box. Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, you're welcome, Candy. You're welcome. It was 50% off as nothing to sneeze at. Ow! Oh, bumped my knee on my drawer because I didn't close my drawer. All right, now. What we want to do now, or what I want to do now, is I want to mark where the halfway point is on this piece. So what I'm going to do, just to make that easy on myself, is I'm going to put it in my scoreboard. And I'm just going to draw a line with a pencil. Um, put my ruler at the six inch mark, because that's halfway, because it's 12. All right. All right. Now I want my little Tyvek reinforcer to overlap to, to be about an eighth of an inch on my piece. Right? So what I'm going to do is if I know halfway, okay, I know this, that this, the front is nine and a half. Half of nine and a half is uh, four and three quarters. So I need to come over, not four and three quarters, but one eighth short of four and three quarters, which is four and five eighths. So I'm going to put the four and five eighths inch mark on the line I just drew, and I'm going to draw another line. And then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the same thing. Four and five eighths. Draw a line. All right, now. What I'm going to do is I know that this uh, little piece of Tyvek is just over eight inches, so I'm going to fold it in half because I need four inches and then I'm going to cut it. This ruler is the creative grids six and a half inch ruler. Uh, in the link, it, there's a link in the video description for, to my Amazon favorites list. And the Creative Grids ruler is on there so that you can see it, get an, see what it's called. We also sell it in our shop. All right. Now I'm going to put this down right on this pencil line and just smooth it out. All 
I burnish with my bone folder. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to clean up my desk. My desk is getting dirty. Um, May, I'm, thank you for purchasing the Half the Fun album basics guide. I hope you enjoy making the project. Lots of good options in that one for pages and lots of videos too. That one has a ton of videos. Burnishing with a bone folder, cleaning up my bone folder, and then I'm going to pick it up and clean up my desk. All right, then I'm going to, um, I clear the glossy accents out of the nozzle by squeezing it until you see I get this air bubble. And then I just wipe off the bottle. And then when I let it go, the vacuum pulls the glossy accents out of the nozzle down into the bottle. And that's how I keep it from getting clogged the glossy accents bottle all right so i'm gonna let this sit i'm gonna put this on my the other side of my desk i'm gonna put this on my other desk not the other side of my desk and then i'm gonna do the same thing to the back so the back is seven so we're gonna cut a seven inch piece and then we're gonna reinforce the corners with uh, the tie back. I just need to make some bigger pieces. Yep, that's long enough, so we'll use this. And this time we'll need two strips because we can't fold it in half and cut it. All right, gonna put my tie back away. Um, if you don't have Tyvek, what I would do is I would not wrap it around the corners. So if you don't have Tyvek, what I would do is, hi, hi buddy, hi. Um, and you can see this in the Glitter Gang Facebook group. Ca uh, Candy posted her decorated box today and, sh and she didn't go around the corners. So you can see how it looks. But what I would do is I, I would just cover this piece of cardstock and leave the corners raw chipboard. It looks great if you do it that way too. Okay, absolutely. So you just, and so then you would just cut your piece to four by nine and a half and just glue it to the front. Um, but waterproof envelopes, waterproof shipping envelopes, they are made out of Tyvek. So you can purchase a pack of them and there are some companies that sell them all different colors like Jam Paper, for example, sells them all different colors on Amazon in the US. So um, you can get them white, black, cream, pink, you know, whatever color you, whatever color you want, some places. Oh, this ruler is too long or too wide to use. So I'm just going to use the ruler itself. I'm going to mark the center, which is six inches because it's a 12 inch piece.
and then we're going to go uh, four and five eighths, four and five eighths over from the center on both sides. My desk is a little bit sticky. So I obviously should have cleaned it better. <laughs> oh well. All right. Um, yeah, it will remain in your um, box account. Once it's in your box account, once you have it hooked to your box account, it'll stay there as long as both you and I have a box account. So the only, the only two ways, or, or if you, well, I guess there's a third way. I'll, the, if you leave box, you'll need, to, in order to keep access to it, you'll need to download it first. If I leave box, in order to keep access to it, you'll need to download it first. I would give you plenty of warning before I did that. That would be like if I retired from crafting. All right. And then the third option would be you did something that got you um, banned or something like that. And what would happen is we would refund you and then we would ban you and we would take it away from your box. So those are the, those are the three ways that it would leave your box account. Or if you, you or if you needed a refund for some reason. So thank you to everyone who purchased something from the Black Friday sale. We always appreciate your purchases and your interest in our projects and our tape. We have more tape on the way. So we're not going to be out of tape for too long. Hope, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. So what I'm doing is I'm just running a line of glue along the edges of the paper and along the line. And then I'm covering the piece with glue. Just trying to keep as much glue on it as possible. Make sure there's really great contact right where I need it. Yeah, the link that expires in 30 days in, in your confirmation emails, when you buy a digital product, um, it says this will expire in 30 days. What will expire in 30 days is your link to download the invitation to the box folder. So that's the thing that you get from the shop when you buy something. You get um, a download link to go download the invitation and then the invitation has the instructions on how to join, how to add that folder to your box folder. What will expire is the link to the invitation that is auto generated by our shop. If that happens to you, just email Mr. Lifeguard at sales at and he will send you a new one that'll be good for 30 days. 
All right, so that's no that's no crisis. That's that's what that means when you get that 30 days. It doesn't mean you have to download the entire folder in 30 days, all the videos, all of that, or you lose access. You have access. Okay, you have access. It's just that link inviting you to the folder that t explains how to add it to your folder. That is what goes away in 30 days. And then you just need you just ask for another one. And we'll give you another one because we're not trying to keep you. That's just auto generated by our shop. We're not trying to keep you from your purchases. So if those links do expire, we just give you a new one. Now, if you ask for a new one, Mr. Lifeguard may give you 50 lashes with a wet noodle. But, you know, it just depends on what kind of a day he's having. I'm just kidding. He would not give anyone 50 lashes with a wet noodle. Okay. So let's go back now and get our first one. And I'll trim it down and then we'll ink the edges. That would hurt so bad. 50 lashes with a, net, a wet noodle would be brutal. It would be brutal. Especially if he's really mad and it's a lasagna noodle. Just imagine. All right, so if I have done all my math correctly, when I go to put this down, I should be able to overlap it on both sides and I can. So, you know, hooray to me for not screwing it up. Okay. So that's good. So what I'm going to do is because I recently found out from Mr. Lifeguard that I need to be using, oop, nope, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just using three quarter inch tape to go all the way along the long side, okay? All the way. from edge to edge. Priya says, I'm searching for my download links. I don't want noodle torture. <laughs> and then I'm going to make sure I have a nice line of tape right next to the Tyvek so the Tyvek doesn't lift me off the page. I'm not going to put any adhesive on the Tyvek itself except where it wraps or it goes around the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to put tape in the middle. And then I'll get some tape here. Do three eighths inch tape. I'm gonna do one strip right next to the Tyvek so that there's adhesive on either side of the Tyvek and then I'm gonna do one strip on the edge. All right, and then hopefully this will work the way that I think. I have not been on long Chaka, maybe 29 minutes thereabouts. You have not missed too much. All right, so got all my tape on. I'm going to burnish and then I'm going to ink the edges and I'm just going to use brushed corduroy 
just for a nice soft sort of vintage look but not to really change the color of the paper too much and mostly because it's on my desk so you know that's why and we only need to do the long sides because the short sides will not show Well, I just did a short side anyway, because it's just like, you know, ingrained in my brain. All right. So now we go. All right. So I'm going to peel the tape from the top the bottom and inside the tie back inside the tie back and eh, i'm gonna just peel all the tape it's not it's whatever Proceed with confidence. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I just want to. So I've got the front down. I'm going to put my hand inside this to support it a little bit and then burnish. All right. And then I'm going to hold it on its corner. Okay. So and then I'm just going to roll this over the side. and then burnish. All right, so that I have then now this really nice clean corner here. All right, I'm so happy. All right, so now I'm gonna just do the same thing on the other side, just starting in the middle. I'm just gonna push it over. and then burnish. All right, so now I have this wrap around the front. So what's gonna happen is, why, why did I do this? All right, so uh, the reason I did this is so that when I put the side piece on, all right, it will go, you know, it will, it will butt up against it so on these corners you won't see the you won't see the um you won't see the corner basically so you don't have to do this you know you don't have to make this extra time or take this extra step you can just put your piece right on the front and just leave the corner raw if you want to that's up to that's up to you and if you want to see what that looks like candy posted her box in the facebook group this morning and it looks great and she her corners are raw you know so it's either way you can do it either way all right so now i'm gonna um, do the back all right now gonna same thing gonna trim any excess The Polaroids for Half the Fun have already been made. I don't, 
I don't know. Um, and also there, I put the five by seven pinwheel in half the fun and split decision that Barbara M Jean made. So there are some cut files in those two in a bonus folder. So. All right, so now I'm gonna ink the edges. Well, we ended up having to get the Nas earlier than we thought we would. We got it a while back because um, it looked like my computer was about to die for a minute there. And we thought, well, if we have to replace the computer, we're gonna have to back up all the equipment on it anyway. So we might as well do the Nas. And then here's the thing. As soon as we transferred everything to the NAS and reformatted the drives on the computer, the computer stopped having problems. So we think the computer was having problems, but it was because so many of the hard drives were like 90% full, 95% full, you know. Um, so getting the NAS seems to have saved the computer. The computer appears to be fine now. But what we did get is we did get deals on new hard drives for the PC because we don't trust the hard drives that are in it right now. So we were able to get um, deals on new hard drives for the PC just in case the problem will start again as soon as we put anything on the hard drives, on the internal hard drives. So we're get we, because um, we reformatted them and we haven't put anything on them. So we just got new hard drives. We were gonna get new lighting because I'm like a whiny baby and I want to be able to adjust the lights without having to stand behind the lights, you know? Um, I d because that's how lazy I am. I wanna use a remote control to adjust the lights even though I adjust them like maybe two or three times a year. Um, and so I was gonna get new lights and they were on a Black Friday sale but then I was like, am I $300 lazy? Like, is that really where I am? Because if I am, I have a problem as a person and I need to meditate on what's wrong with me. But then I decided I wasn't $300 lazy. So we have the same lights. There are four hard drives in the NAS. Um, so f four, maybe. I'd have to double check. Pretty sure it's four. Yeah, no, 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 it's definitely four. It's definitely four. We put four Iron Wolf hard drives in it. Iron Wolf is a hard drive made for NAS by Seagate. So it has four Iron Wolf hard drives in it. And then we replaced, we replaced the hard drives in the PC with Barracuda hard drives, which are also Seagate. But they're a little bit faster, a little bit stronger than what we had in them, which was Western Digital. We had a combination of Western Digital Green and Western Digital Black. Western Digital Black drives are faster uh, drives and green are slower. And we just replace them all with the same brand, all faster. So, um, yeah. You need a cloud storage that holds a couple of terabytes. Do you, well, do you want a cloud or do you want a server in your house? Cause a NAS is a server in your house and cloud storage would be like box.com where it would be outside of your house. So, but we can, you can access the NAS we have from the cloud. So it's online. You can put, well, you can make it online if you want to. So I'll tell you, uh, the brand we got is Synology and they do make ones that hold two drives. Um, so you could look, you could look into those. Um, Cause you could get like two, two terabyte drives or something like that, you know, and that would be a good amount of storage. Um, I would say of all the companies we looked at, the reason we went with Synology was they had the they, they had the combination of like really well rated by professionals who knew what they were doing, but like didn't require you to know. Like for example, there's there there are NAS the, you have to know Linux or Unix or other computing languages and things like that, and so we didn't want anything like that. 
Another company you could look at is a company called Drobo, D-R-O-B-O. So there's Synology. That's what we have. Drobo is another Synology. You spelled it exactly right. Yep. And then Drobo is D-R-O-B-O. And Synology is S-Y-N-O-L-O-G-Y. But we almost, we, I mean, we've been looking at Drobo for years and we went with Synology almost at the last minute. Um, so, but I think that we made the right choice. And the reason we chose Synology is because I went on, I always try to find when I'm trying to make a decision about a piece of technology that I know nothing about, I always want to go and find a forum of like nerds who are talking about the technology I'm researching. So for example, when I wanted a pair of wireless earbuds that didn't cost an arm and a leg, but were actually pretty good, sounded actually pretty good, I went on audiophile websites, like people who, you know, they have like $3,000 um, handmade by Italians, whatever, headsets, you know, earphones. And of course, all of their discussion started with, well, you should never listen to wireless earbuds because of, you know, it's just not pure audio, whatever. But if you must get these, you know, if you want to, okay, well, the Synology we have can be accessed from the internet. So as long as it's on, you put it on your home network, your home wireless network, and then you can access it from Wi-Fi anywhere you have Wi-Fi. So I, I, I'm sh probably Drobo does that as well. Um, and then they're, they're in your house, but so they're not stored on the internet. They're stored. It's still, it's still in your house, but when you're not at your house, you can connect to the network over the internet and you can still see your files. Um, or you could just, just use box and put everything in uh, something like box. I don't trust box completely. Right? So I trust box like 99.9%. .9%. But I don't know if you all remember when a few years ago Flickr deleted the accounts of a bunch of professional photographers, just deleted their whole portfolios and couldn't get them back because of a, you know, a programming mistake they made. And I'm always worried about something like that happening, you know, with cloud storage. So I always want it in the cloud, but I also want it in the house. I want it both places. And my solution used to be I kept it on the PC and in the cloud, but then the PC started dying. So now it's in the, now it's on the server and in the cloud. Well, Catherine, that's what we're going to do. So Catherine says we've had a Nas for years is where we keep all of our music, movies, photos, etc. We're going to, um, I named a folder called Plex and we're going to put all of our DVDs and Blu-rays and everything into that. And we're going to get Plex so that wherever we are, we can watch our DVDs and, and all of that. So that's one of my projects for 20, um, for 2020 is I'm going to convert all of our stuff, make it digital. Oh yeah. If you, then if you have, if you have a two terabyte and a four terabyte hard drive and you want some, you need, and you're, so you need like six terabytes of space. I would get, uh, I would get a NAS. Because you can, you can, you can add tons of stuff because of that into a NAS because you can control, t you know, how much your NAS can hold by the size of the drives you put in it um, and by how many drives you have. So like we got the four bay and we put four drives in it because we wanted to do RAID 5, which is a kind of like a storage language, I guess, because RAID 5, you lose the smallest amount of space on the drives. So like four two terabyte drives that are on RAID 5 have more space on them than like two four terabyte, tri tri uh, two four terabyte drives that are running like RAID 2 or RAID 3 or something like that. So, you know, so if you can, if you can afford to do four, it's better to do four because you have less loss of storage. I know we're getting into the weeds here on technology for sure but if you can afford a four bay nas over a two bay nas it's not the end of the world if you don't want to spend the money but if you can afford to do it and when you're looking at prices also bear in mind they don't come with drives you got to buy the drives separate 
for most of them. But um, Iron Wolf, Iron Wolf. We bought Iron Wolf drives. They're, uh, they seem to be rated, people liked them better than the, um, again, I'm putting it on its corner and then I'm starting in the middle, I'm just pressing it over and then I can go out to the sides. And then I can come around here and burnish. And then I've got to deal with this corner right here, but I'm gonna deal with it after I've wrapped both sides. It's not a big deal. All right. So yeah, we went on audio and video nerd websites. We specifically with people who really like Plex, that's where we did a lot of our research. What do people who really like Plex want use? And so, um, and they really are partial to Synology. All right, so I've lined my ruler up with the edge of the cardstock veneer that I put on the side. And now I'm gonna take my craft knife and just very carefully, very gently gonna cut through just the paper, okay? I'm not trying to even get all the way through the paper on the first try, I'm just trying to make a little little slit all right because i'm going to cut through this paper I'm pull off the paper but i don't want to cut all those layers of cardstock that i put you know so There we go. And what didn't cut is the Tyvek. What, that's what that little piece sticking out is. So I'm just gonna come and get that with my scissors. Yeah, so, okay. So you, if you've replaced your own hard drives then this will be pretty easy for you to do because it's no different. In fact, it's a little bit easier. So you should be all set. But yeah, I would do, like I said, we were going to, we, we had had our eye on Drobo for years. And then when we, when we did our research, when it was time to buy, it looked like Synology was just like a little bit better. So we went with them. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to re-ink right there just gonna hit the top of that there we go all right so we've done that so now when we put our piece on the side it will cover you know it'll cover all right so we've just got to do the same thing on the other side we've got to get rid of the other one <laughs> you do learn a lot on this show it's true you never know what the topic is going to be either the Tyvek wraps the corner. Yes, it does. Yes. The, the Tyvek goes around the corner to protect the corner. To protect the corner. So that the corner won't take any damage. Right there we go got it perfect now hard parts done hard parts done that's it that's the hardest part all right we've done we've done the front and the back are the hard part so now we're going to do the sides sides are easier so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to make a template for the sides So 
yeah i would say if you can spring for a four bay nas and get four hard drives so you could do raid five because that's a, a lot less loss of storage on that than any we were we bought a four drive but we were originally going to buy a four bay drive well we bought a four bay drive and we bought two drives to put in it because we were gonna just use two big drives so like two eight terabyte drives and then we were gonna buy bigger drives as we needed them but when we saw how much storage we lost doing you know raid two or three or whatever it is that you do for two drives i was just ho i was just appalled and so i just we bought two more drives like <laughs> immediately bought two more drives so i you know i have one drive that the only thing on it is a recycling bin <laughs> but it's because because All right, now, these are, we cut six and a half by seven. So we're gonna cut, and this is, we cut two. We cut two of these. And I cut this first one from this upper left corner. I'm going to cut the other one from the right. That way, you know, they're not exactly the same on either side. Now, if you want yours to be exactly the same, you can do that as well. You need a fire stick with recording and playback abilities. Well, now that's trickier. So like a little baby DVR. All right, so this is gonna go on here. Like so. So you can see how the, blue, the green is gonna wrap straight into the cream. That's why we did it. So what I'm going to do is that's a little bit trickier. Um, do you need to record? You want to record from cable, like from your TV? I'm not going to use my pattern paper for this because I'm a little on over the air. All right. Well, one option is that you can hook a, um, I'm going to use a scrap instead. One option is that you can hook, if you can hook a, your computer up to your antenna, uh, Microsoft has a thing that will record from an antenna. Um, some kind of receiver in their computers so any any microsoft laptop i think is supposed to be able to record from an antenna now there may be something you have to buy to make it work like a part or something i'm not sure about that but i know when we had looked into getting an antenna for over the air that was one of the options was you don't have to buy anything else you could just set one of your computers to to record it, set it up. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, just pinch this so that I can set it down and then trace it. Other than that, I don't know too much about the antennas. All right, so now I'm gonna cut. And I'm gonna cut this by putting it, this is one area where I don't have 
a ton of expertise. I know that's shocking, right? All right, so I'm gonna just try my best to cut this to where I think it's gonna work. And I mean, that's, that's basically it, right? It's just a, it's a little, maybe a little teensy bit too much. I mean, I may need to take like a 16th of an inch off the side, off the bottom. but not too bad. All right, so I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna take like, just off, this, off the bottom, just like a 16th of an inch. Just a little thread, not much at all. All right. And then once I'm sure that it's the right size, then I'll use this as a template. Yeah, okay, so this is gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use it for this side first. And then I'm just gonna cut this. I'm gonna tape it all the way around. And I'm gonna ink it and stick it down. All right, so while it's still dry and there's no adhesive on it, I'm gonna just set it down and see, does it still work? Does it still cover everything I needed to cover? The answer is yes, it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it and ink it. So let's, and I'm gonna use three quarter inch tape because I really want the, the tape to be good. I'm gonna go off the edge. I'm gonna start off the edge so I get that whole point taped all the way top to bottom. And um, one of the things I almost bought for Black Friday was an outdoor antenna. Really, really powerful. But then, you know, um, we decided at the last minute not to worry about it for now. But we are thinking about, you know, getting that to get some of the broadcast stuff. You know, like if you ever want to watch a game or something. All right. So then I'm going to pick it up. Trim off any glue that's hanging off the edges and then burnish. And I should probably do a piece in the middle too. Then we're gonna ink the edges and stick it down.
Oh, I'm excited about this box. I have always been interested in learning about technology. I come from a family that's always been very technology oriented. Um, we have had some kind of co computer in our house since 1982, which is extremely early. Um, you know, a lot of them were like early co um, computer type things like, um, you know, Atari, we had a ColecoVision, you know, we have video game players in the 80s. Um, and then we always had a PC in our house starting in 1987. We always had some kind of desktop and computer from 1987 on. So... Um, that's very early, you know, that's very early. Our first computer was an Apple II. Um, and um, uh, it has a lot to do with a few things. One, we're from Southern California and um, there are a lot of interest in Japanese technology in that area in the 80s. Uh, so we kind of got into it in, in that way. And then also my mom's brother, my uncle, he was a publisher of a magazine. And so he had computers, you know, for publishing, for graphic design and that sort of thing, layouts, you know, in the, in the 80s as well, back when like no one had computers, you know. And so we got early exposure to computers from that. So... Um, yeah, the Commodore 64, the Atari. Oh my gosh, I told you guys about this before. The show about Commodore, it's not technically about Commodore. It's about another company that's very obviously Commodore, you know. Um, halt and Catch Fire. Um, that, that show is amazing. Um, it's, it's about the, the Dallas, like, there's a Silicon Valley-esque area around Dallas, if you don't know. Like, a, tre a tremendous technology area around Dallas. That's where Commodore's from. Um, and so, it's about that. That's awesome, Kathleen. Anyone who had a computer in the 80s, you are a very early adopter of that technology. You are a very early adopter of computer technology. That's probably why you're all learning about crafting on the internet, right? Because you're, because of the technological interest. So, but, um, so my whole entire life, and I am generation X, so it's not, it's not common for people my age. My whole entire life, I've had technology in my house. Um, so, and that's not common. That's not something everyone in, gen that's, that's true about everyone in generation X. Um, that's not even true about all millennials. Um, you know, so, um, it's definitely, it's just always been an interest. Like we had computer magazines that I remember reading before I was in high school. So yeah, it's, it was unusual. I, I mean, I, I acknowledge that it's very unusual. So, <laughs> um, cause I know I've talked to other people like in college, when, when did you get your first computer? And it's like in high school they, they had, we had the we had the internet very early as well. So that's, you were in, so Candy said she got a bachelor's of science in computers in 1975. And that was the first class at her university of that. Barbara Jean, um, I think my parents are like that. And I think it's because again, it was always a very technologically advanced, um, household, right? And there's a lot of technology now that makes lives a lot better. So it's really funny. We started watching 11, 20, 11, 28, 63. You'll have to, you'll have to excuse me. I don't know the date Kennedy was assassinated to, to the T, but there's a show. Uh, there's a mini series star, uh, based on a Stephen King novel starring James Franco about, people trying to prevent Kennedy's assassination with a time machine. And, um, 
it it's 11 11 is it 11 oh my gosh this is this is bad This is really bad. 11-22-63. 11-22-63. All right. Anyway, so one of the first things he does is, is he, he gives up his cell phone. Um, and then later on, he has to prove to someone that he's from the future. And I thought, well, he probably shouldn't have gotten rid of his cell phone. Because that really would have proven he was from the future. <laughs> so... Eleven twenty two sixty three Canadian, yeah. <laughs> I worked on the grandfather of the Apple, it was called the Star, huge graphics machine which used a mouse. Um, Mr. Lifeguard has the hard drive from the first computer. Mr. Lifeguard's 10 years older than I am. So um, his relationship to technology is different from mine in that he's always been involved with technology from very early on because his career path in the Air Force was always related to technology. So even when he was like a little baby Air <laughs> uh, Patrol member, um, he... Um, he worked on mainframes, actually uh, has VA benefit from being deaf, deafened by the old mainframes because they were so big and so loud. Um, so he's partially deaf because of working on mainframes. Now, a lot of people in the Air Force who are partially deaf, deaf are partially deaf from jet engines, but not him. <laughs> it's from computers. So... Um, Yeah, so he, but he has a hard drive from um, a very early computer uh, that he worked on, and I think it probably holds like 200 kilobytes, maybe, of space, and it's the size of a turkey serving platter. It's just amazing, um, the changes. And I was listening to, uh, again, it fits perfectly. Yay. Uh, I was listening to the Cinephiles episode of, I've mentioned the Cinephiles before. If you like movies, I really recommend it as a, a podcast. Um, they did Apollo 13 and they had someone who, a NASA engineer on to, to talk to them about the technology. And of course, like your smartphone has more power than the computer that sent people to space. Think about that. But one of the things that I learned um, about the, the NASA computer is that every single task the NASA computer had was prioritized and they would shut down in order so it couldn't crash. It was a crash. It was an uncrashable computer. And that's something we don't have now. <laughs> I did not put tape on the bottom, May. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe I'll text Mr. Lifeguard and if he's not busy, he'll bring up his hard drive. Well, his platter. Oh, Sandra just sent me escape in the future from telephones, the telephone of the future. Mark Sullivan, San Francisco president and director of the Pacific Telephone and Telegraph Company. 
said in an address Thursday night, just what form the future telephone will take is, of course, pure speculation. Here's my prophecy. In its final development, the telephone will be carried about by the individual, perhaps as we carry a watch today. It probably will require no dial or equivalent, and I think the users will be able to see each other if they want as they talk. While Mark Sullivan definitely had his finger on the pulse. <laughs> That's so interesting. From uh, April 11th, 1953 in the Tacoma News Tribune. All right. I wonder if he ever got anything for that. <laughs> Probably not. Well, I remember watching a documentary on um, the first Star Trek. And they were talking about how many of the things that are just totally speculative in Star Trek are real now. Like the communicators, we can communicate that way. Um, the computer that monitors their vital signs in the med bay didn't exist then. It exists now. All right. I'm going to put this final piece on. Ah! Oh, no. Don't. Please don't grab. Please. Please. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't do this. Okay. Okay. All right, so it wants to be a punk um, and stick exactly where I first placed it. So I'm just going to have to cut off. All right, he brought his, he, I don't know what this is exactly. Is it a hard drive or just a plate from a hard drive? It is, it's a plate from a hard drive. A plate, one platter from a hard one drive. Platter. Yeah. All right, here it is. And what does it hold? Oh, I couldn't tell you because it was, there was a stack of several of these. Now, your hard drives today, same exact technology, although much, I'm much smaller. smaller. All right, so this probably thing probably had like 200 meg on it or something. Oh, okay. I'm guessing uh, several of them. This is on a mainframe. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you guys. I'm not going to show you guys. Do we have one? Not, it's not open, but. Well, you can open up one of the archive ones. You want to do no, that? I want to do uh, the sm how small. Oh, the, how small they are, All yeah. Right, so this is two terabytes it's still in the package but that's that's so this is 200 meg and it's like with several platters uh this is two terabytes which is i don't know how many orders of the levels higher two but two terabytes is two thousand me twenty thousand so megabytes 100 times bigger I yeah two terabytes is twenty thousand no two thousand megabytes two thousand megabytes yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot bigger. Hello. Yeah, so there was several of these, probably six or seven, and they went in a giant pack that you carried around and you put into the mainframe and you locked down that I, actually, I used to work with when I first went in the Air Force. But see, you can kind of see it on this. You see, this is the thing that spins the platters. Yeah. This, the, it's like a little record player. Yeah, there's, so, there's several much smaller versions of these. In here. Yep. Oh my gosh, today is like computer learning hour. <laughs> Wait till you see the one that they had that was before they had this and it was all magnetic cores. They lo were loading into the side of the plane when it was uh, in the 50s or 60s. I mean, it's a giant piece of work. All right, so what I did here just to save myself from having to try and reposition this is um, I hooked my knife under the edge and cut it off. So now all I have to do is just re-ink it. All right, so um, when I when I hooked, uh, tried to peel it up, I, I hurt a couple little areas. I'm just gonna put little drops of um, liquid glue and press them down. You can use little drops of liquid glue to fix any paper you tear. And 
No problem. All right. So we've got that. So now I just need to just re-ink this edge right here. Just going to very gently hit this edge. All right. So we've got the box pretty much covered now. All right. So we've got the box covered in paper. Hooray. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are both geeks. It's true. <laughs> so. It's true. All right. I'm not going to decorate the inside. The reason why is because we're going to fill it. So we can save ourselves some paper by just leaving the inside raw. Plus, if we cover the inside totally with patterns and then we have patterns on the outside of the folders we put in it, and then we can get pattern overload. So I would say maybe we'll just leave the inside raw. It's not raw. It's covered with, with our cardstock. Um, and that'll be a nice like canvas for all the pattern paper in the folders we're going to add to it. So the only thing we might want to do is put like a, a, a center title piece on this. Okay. But I mean, look at, look at how neat and clean and beautiful it is. I mean, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. All right, let's find some goodies. All right, so that's a little too long. I have this big believe. And I think this would be nice. With like some... poinsettias maybe I've got a lot of poinsettia pieces in here that I can use but I don't think they're in this bag although maybe we'll use these little trees Merry Christmas. So yeah, we've always been like huge nerds, I guess. I like the red with the believe. Yeah, I think we need to just stick with, well, or do we like, no, I like the believe. Let's use the believe. We just need more poinsettias, that's all. Um, I made my own number cards. I'll show you what I did. I got the digital collection and I took, I took, I cut this poinsettia out of, it was uh, digitally, I cut it out. I used the cookie cutter tool on, um, on Photoshop to cut out a circle out of one of the cards. And then I put my own numbers on that little circle I cut out of the card. So I made my own numbers, one through 12. So I did make my own numbers. You could just use their number cards, but their, their number cards didn't come with the digital collection. Um, so, boo. All right, here's the bag that I think I put the greenery in. Yeah. Well, at our, at our house, my, the, everyone believes in Santa because, so, um, 
when I found out there was no Santa, I was really, I immediately told my younger sister, this is why your kids will only believe in Santa as long as the oldest kid believes in Santa a lot of the time. Um, so when I found out, um, the other thing you could do is you could just put thickers, you know, you could just put thickers. You need a lot of ones. That would be the only problem with using thickers. So when I found out, I told my sister and then she went and told my mom that I, t you know, she went and tattled on me immediately. And my mom sat us down and told us very seriously that Santa would only bring presents as long as my brother believed in Santa Claus. And then she said, do you understand? And we said, yes. So we immediately went and told my brother about Santa. But we also added what my mom said about Santa. And my brother swears up and down to this day that he believes. So we're still in the clear. So... <laughs> so. And my mom, every year, tries to just get him to just admit it, but he never does. He never does. Okay, the belief will work, but we need to put it on something. Like, it needs a backing of some kind. So I might look in the pattern paper, but, and see if there's, like, a motif that we can use. Yes, we do. That we could cut out. This bird's too big, unfortunately, because the bird would be really cute. All right, so what I think I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to just put this on like a, make. we're gonna have to make like a, a plate where we're gonna put this on a pattern paper and then back that with a piece of cardstock. Um, so we just need to find like, what would be a good back background for the Believe. And I think it would be this red, there's a red paper with words in it. this one so if I just put this on the believe and then we put this on like a dark brown cardstock and put that on the front that's probably the way to go or I have peace I could also do peace my um, brother scan and cut chewed up peace a lot worse than it chewed up believe though that's for sure I'm going to go with believe I'm going to that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ink believe I'm going to put it on a rectangle and I'll put that rectangle on like a brown, you know, a dark brown cardstock so that we have it on the front and I might put something like this like next to it maybe maybe what no There we go. So that it's not just totally plain. We'll do that. Although this actually looks cute. Do you think this needs a red backing or should I just stick it right to the front? Cause now that it's framed, I think it looks cute. What do you think? 
Yeah, the reindeer is terrible. I wish I had another treat. I mean, the rain, the reindeer, I mean, I'm, the reindeer's fine, I guess. I just have, there's so many reindeer and there's not enough trees without reindeer. Maybe I should cover the reindeer up with something. Like a poinsettia. <laughs> What about this? Then we have the red. All right, I think this is, this is it. This is it. All right, so we'll just, we'll just, we'll do this. And then I will do a recording break and I'll show you the um, folder I have designed, I have in mind for the, for the project. And then we'll do one, we'll do one folder and then I'll show you the closure. And then we'll probably be done for the day, but at that point we'll, you'll have all the pieces and parts you need to get going with your your um, boxes. Shaga, I think that's a good idea. I have friends that never start with Santa and um, I think that works really well, you know. Um, two. Because then you don't have the horrible realization moment with, with them, you know. We're hiding the reindeer, yes. We're hiding the reindeer. Because we don't have another tree without a reindeer. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go put these I need to leave out because, all right, so I need to clean up some of the poinsettias. Because the brother, as usual, was on a rampage. Animals have no chance on this show, it's true. <laughs> that is very true. Okay. So Um, what I'm going to do with the believe because I want, because it's so spindly, I want the tape to go all the way around, but I don't want to use liquid glue. So I'm going to cut the tape away from it. Tiny and kitty do okay. That's true. Tiny and kitty do okay. They're the only animals that survive. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to peel this up and put it on my glass mat. Okay. And cut it out. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because um, I don't love the effect that comes from putting liquid glue on top of cardstock. It can make the cardstock bubble up. 
um, wherever you didn't put tape. And because I didn't cover the whole thing with wall-to-wall -wall tape, I don't want to worry about that happening. So I'm going to use dry adhesive. But so when you put wet glue over um, dry adhesive, wherever the tape isn't, the wet glue will pull that up towards itself. Okay. Um, and so what happens is that anywhere you don't have tape will bubble up and it'll pull away from, in this case, the cardstock that the pattern paper is sitting on. If I had put tape wall to wall, I wouldn't have to worry about that. I could use liquid glue on top of it because there would be nowhere to bubble. So, um, so that's the problem. That's why I, that's why I know liquid glue in this particular case. Um, because I didn't plan to use liquid glue. I didn't think far enough ahead. You can use tape on top of glue. That always works. Tape on top of glue, it's just that glue on top of tape doesn't work unless your tape coverage is perfect, basically. And I know my tape coverage isn't perfect, so I can't do it. If I was thinking ahead, I would have realized I would have wanted to decorate the front of this and I would have done tape edge to edge you know, wall to wall, but I didn't. So here we are. So I'm making do I'm foraging on because you know what here we adapt to our choices. That's what we do on this show. We adapt to choices. <laughs> so but because you're watching me on yours, you can use liquid glue if you, all you have to do in order to be able to use liquid glue is just make sure this piece is covered completely on the back from edge to edge with uh, liquid glue or with tape and then you won't have to worry about it bubbling. So I'm just going to cut it out, you know, it is what it is, but, and we could ink this with a different color. You could ink this with red or green instead of the brown and that would make it look nice. as well or if you wanted it to be a little bit more elegant you could do the sharpie oh another thing i ordered on black friday was a pack of sharpies in a bunch of different colors so we can do the sharpie in more colors than just black although black works really well for almost all projects i was thinking though it would be nice about a dark brown sharpie but i saw a set of 12 there was a lightning deal on Amazon, so I got them. So we'll have more colors as well for that. There is a lot, there was a lot, we did a lot of learning today, it's true.
the E is going to be the trickiest part. And then once I get the E done, it'll be pretty smooth sailing. I do have quite a bit of patience. It's true. I got tape where I don't want it. I'm just going to peel it up with some tweezers. I think, look, it's, it's not a race. This is going to be the second time today I said this. It's not a race. There's no competition. I think crafting should be your meditative, creative time, you know, where you decompress and you relax and you have fun and don't stress out because it's just paper. You can fix almost any mistake. You've seen me make a bunch of mistakes. I've shown you a bunch of different ways you can fix mistakes on this show. It's almost always fixable. If it's not fixable, then it's no big deal. Paper costs 60 cents a sheet. If you have to toss one every once in a while, it's no big deal. It's not, it's not. It's not worth your peace of mind. And yes, there are no crafting police that are gonna break down your door and rifle through your albums and point out a way you did it that was different than what I did or whatever. So, yeah. No need for there to be any stress. Any stress. Barbara Jean says, that's the biggest thing I've learned from you and it's made my crafting nicer, not so much pressure. Yeah, don't put pressure on yourself. No one's putting pressure on you. Let me give you an example. I talk about, you know, I talk about on the show, I'm doing this because I'm, I like, you know, I'm very particular. I am very much have per perfectionist tendencies, right? But that I promise you, stuff that bothers you doesn't, no one else notices. I say this all the time. So one of the ways this came up recently was I made sure that the dividers in my box, they were the same height as the sides of the box. You know, I took my time to cut off the little bit that was poking up from the top. And as I was doing it, I said, you know, this probably doesn't matter, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. And, um... Candy posted her box and she said, I'm sure you noticed, she t commented when I commented, I'm sure you noticed that I left them sticking up. And I said, actually, I didn't notice that you left them sticking up until you told me, which just underscores how pointless it was that I took the time to make mine exactly the right height. So what I'm saying is even when professional crafters look at your projects, they're not seeing flaws or what you perceive to be flaws. I designed the box and I didn't even notice that she skipped that step. You see what I'm saying? So no family member is going to notice that one of them pokes up an eighth of an inch or whatever. So you just, just release yourself. Just breathe it out. Just go and just let it all go because everything you're doing is the most clever thing your family has ever seen. Everything you're doing. Because every, cause, cause every project you do is better than the last one that you did because you're getting better every time. So that's it. That's it. Just be happy. Just be excited at how much you're learning, growing, making, that you're taking something that's a flat two foot square or one foot square, one square foot of, of 
ground up trees <laughs> and you're turning that into this. You're turning that into this. Look at that. You know, that's it. You are a magician as far as everyone who knows you is concerned. That's all they think. That's all they think. So if I can, if I can give you one thing, it would be peace of mind. And then after that, it would be whatever you can fix it. Don't worry about it. You can fix it. Barbara Jean says, when I was early in quilting, I thought every point had to be perfect. So I came up with the five foot rule. Lay the thing on the floor. And if it looks good from five feet away, it's perfect as it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So all of our little bits are inked now what i'm going to do with these little tiny guys once i get my arrangement exactly the way i want it all right here we go so we're going to put the believe and we're i might put it off offset a little bit we'll see so i want to kind of hook nope i thought i wanted to hook those together maybe I'll hook them here there we go I want to still I want things to look interwoven all right so this looks good to me. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of it. This is another one of those crafty techniques that is like, if you think you might forget the way you want it to work, just take a picture of it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use a liquid glue that I don't use all that often. Never mind, I'm not going to because it looks like I'm out. J K L O L. Okay. All right, so for my little tree here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get, all right, I'm going to peel the tape just off the E and then I'm going to stick it. There we go. Just going to stick it on there. Okay. And then I'm going to put tape in like a triangle, I think. I'm gonna get, you know, get it as stuck down as I can. And I might put a little bit of liquid glue just right on the edge of the tree so I don't have to worry about the tree popping up later. We'll see. Oh no. All right, so we've got that. And then I think I'm gonna do the same thing with the bee. I'm gonna put the tree all the way behind it. Yep. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. So then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get this quarter inch tape as close to the edges as possible. So then we're just going to cover up, there we go. We'll use the, this point set it. Now this one we can use liquid glue because this one is not stuck down yet. And until it's stuck down, you're fine. So this one we can use liquid glue. Press it down and then I'm just going to wipe up the glue wherever the glue is and we'll put tape. So I have asked myself that question, Barbara Jean, but I haven't experimented with it yet. I think we could if we um, taped down the piece. So like I was thinking maybe if we used like the Mr. Pen tape to tape the sheet to the mat around the edges, then the fact that the backing was sticky, it wouldn't matter because it, it wouldn't, you know, or sliding around. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this down. So what Barbara Jean's asking is, you can layer them in the software before cutting. Now that would probably be the way to do it. Yeah, because these are stickers and they're all on their own. They're all individual files in the paper pack, the digital paper pack. So you could, you absolutely could layer them in the software to make your own one piece and then run it through the scan and cut. Yep. And then just glue it to this before you stick this down and you'll be fine. All right, I think we're good now. Thank you. I'd be interested to know how that would, if that does work. Cause I've been thinking about doing it. I just haven't done it. Cause usually I'm not in experimentation mode. I'm just in got to get this printed and cut. Cause I'm doing a class in 12 hours and I'm behind. <laughs> Cause I am always flying by the seat of my pants. All right. So now this whole thing is ready to get stuck down. So all we have to do is go peel the rest of the tape. and then find the place that we think it looks best and stick it down. And then our box will have some nice decor. And I haven't used anything yet in terms of pattern paper or embellishments that isn't just in the digital paper pack. And all of these elements are individual files because they're stickers. So all you have to do is just layer them in Photoshop or draw or whatever you use, paint, whatever, and then they'll be ready to go as one, all one piece. Yeah. All right. So I just want to make sure we get high enough there. Beautiful, beautiful. Burnish really well.
Love it. Love it. Okay. So perfect. There we go. So that is the box decorated, constructed, decorated. So this is the last um, video in this series that will be on just the box. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make the folders. So um, I'm going to do a recording break here and uh, stay tuned for the next video. We're going to work on the folders. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.